What is up guys, Blue Spooky here for a short pre-video talk. Just wanted to thank you guys for all the support you've been showing the channel. If you guys are enjoying the daily uploads, please be sure to remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you feel so inclined. Honestly, my favorite part about recording these true scary stories is hearing what you guys have to say about the video and the stories they're in. So if you have any thoughts on it, please feel free to leave those in the comments below, as I really enjoy reading them. Without further ado though, guys, I will see you at the end of the video, and I hope you enjoy the next 40 minutes of true scary stories. Thanks for watching. When I was in high school, I had a close relationship with all of my friends. Now, I know that may seem like a common sense statement. I just feel like we were a lot closer than a lot of friend groups were at the time. It was a group of eight of us, and we were together basically every weekend, all the way from 7th grade to 12th grade. When college came around, we all went our separate ways. For the most part, even though we tried to stay in touch, after a few years, life just took over. We graduated years ago now, and I'd only seen a few of my friends from high school. Sure, we were all friends on social media still, but it was just not the same. My one friend Brian was going back to our hometown to visit his mother, and he decided to reach out to all of us several months ahead of time. He basically begged all of us to come home so we could have a night out together like we all used to. It was really tempting, but I wasn't sure I could take the time off to go home for one night. When it was about a month away from his coming home, I noticed all of my friends had said that yes, they would come back. I was the only one to hold out out of all of them. My old friends started to beg me to meet up again for old times, and eventually I caved in. I said I would join them. My life was starting to feel a little bit like the beginning of the movie It, when all the friends were going back to their hometown. Now, I was just hoping there wouldn't be any demon clowns when I got there. Before I knew it, I was on my way back home. I stopped and saw my parents and spent the afternoon with them. I brought my wife with me as well, which I was about to find out was a major problem. We all met at a local dive bar in the area. Some of my friends hadn't seen me or my wife since the wedding, and more of them hadn't even met her at all. After we all exchanged pleasantries, Brian pulled me aside and walked us away from the group. It seemed he was very annoyed with me. He gave me a hard time for bringing my wife along. He claimed this was about the friend group reconnecting and my wife was going to ruin things. Needless to say, I was a little bit annoyed. I didn't like the way he was talking to me. I tried my best to be a pretty nice guy though, so I brushed it off and assured him my wife was cool. There was nothing to worry about at all. He should be more respectful. He just groaned and said he would deal with it. Anyway, the night continued on. Honestly, it was a pretty great time. We were all laughing and joking. It was like not a second had passed between me and these guys. My wife couldn't believe how long it had been since we'd all talked. We didn't miss a beat at all. We visited all the local bars in the area and just continued, keeping the night going. Finally, Brian said he had one more bar to show us to. We were all intrigued but pretty tired. We drove to a beautiful house and were confused about where Brian was taking us. When we got out of the car, Brian held out his arms and said, Surprise! Nobody really knew how to react to that. We didn't know what we were being surprised with. Brian explained that he had bought this house and he was moving back to town. We all congratulated him and he invited us in for one last drink. When we got inside, he had a cake for the friend group and an entire spread of food prepared for us. It was a super nice gesture. Just, it was a little late in the evening for all of this. We had been drinking and partying for several hours now. We all stayed in his house and continued to party. When we were getting ready to leave, Brian said, Well, you guys can't just leave yet. Stay here. I appeared grateful and thanked him for the offer. 
but I told my parents I would go home and stay with them. Brian kept insisting, and it started getting really awkward. It's because of her, isn't it? I told you she would ruin everything. We were speechless. The rest of my friends were in shock. I wanted to hit him, but I swallowed my pride and said my goodbyes to everyone, even Brian who refused to apologize for what he'd said. My wife was a little upset I didn't stick up for her more, and I understand that. I just wanted to end the night on a positive note and leave before more damage was done. We got back to my parents' house a little after 2 in the morning. We both got ready for bed and crashed right away. Not long after falling asleep though, my wife woke up. She said she heard something outside. I told her it was probably some animal, since my parents' house was surrounded by wooded areas. As I listened in though, I started to hear it too. It did sound a little bit strange to just be an animal. The room we were sleeping in had a bed right up against the window, and it sounded like something was brushing against it outside. I whipped back the curtain and nothing seemed to be there. I cut my hands to the window and looked out, but I still couldn't see anything, just the pitch black backyard. Now I'd convinced myself it really must have been an animal. We'd probably just go back to sleep and not even hear it again. Minutes later, we began to hear another strange noise though, this time coming from the kitchen. My wife was in a panic. I told her to not worry just yet. It was probably my parents waking up early or something. She begged me to go check though, and so I did. I wasn't scared at this point because I was sure it was just something perfectly explainable. I walked down the hall and walked by my parents' bedroom. It was there that I saw something that instantly freaked me out though. Both of my parents were still in bed sleeping. I could clearly hear someone downstairs though. I turned around with my wife in the doorway of our bedroom and mouthed the calm 911. I didn't want to risk it. Better to be safe than sorry. She closed the door and I heard her lock it. I crept downstairs slowly. Sitting at the kitchen table was Brian. I approached him aggressively, demanding to know what he was doing. He didn't move though. He just sat there at the table not making a single sound. I told him that police were coming, and he finally reacted. He lifted his head slowly to look at me and didn't say anything. I don't know why, but I was unnerved by all of this. He got up and just stared at me. I had known Brian for a long time, and this was very weird behavior from him. His entire reaction was less than a minute, but it felt like it dragged on forever. Brian moved in close, and without any notice he shoved me and took me to the ground. He was a pretty big guy, and with his sudden attack I couldn't get him off me. He sat himself on top of me and started throwing down punches at my head. I put my hands up to defend myself, but there was only so much I could do. He was claiming that I ruined everything, and that because of me our friends would never come back home. Thankfully, the police arrived not long after he began his assault. My dad came downstairs before the cops even came inside. He hit Brian in the back of the head with one of his golf clubs. The police then swiftly arrested him and took him out of the home. Thankfully, I didn't have any serious injuries, but my face was pretty busted up. The night was just insane, but the craziest part is that nobody could really figure out why Brian just snapped like that. He didn't have any history of mental illness or drug use or anything that would indicate erratic behavior. He had always been one of the best people that I knew, and to see him lose it like that just broke my heart. Nobody's gone home since that night, and everybody kind of lost communication with Brian. He deleted all of his social media accounts, and as far as we know, he could be getting professional help somewhere. Brian, if you somehow hear this, I'm sorry if I did something to hurt you. I hope you find the peace that you need. So this happened a couple days ago. I live in the suburbs of Northern Carolina with my parents in an upper middle class neighborhood. My parents are away for their anniversary, so I've sort of had the place to myself for the week. 
I got home from a late shift at work around 1am. I went inside, took a shower, then headed to the kitchen to make some buffalo wings for dinner. I cracked open a beer and plopped down in front of the TV. I was sifting through movies to watch on HBO Plus, when all of a sudden the doorbell rang. It actually startled me to the point that I jumped off the couch, knocking my beer over in the process. It was around 2am now. Obviously, there was no good reason for anyone to be at the door at this hour. I stared in the direction of the front door for several seconds before it rang again, followed by rapid knocking on the door and window. For whatever reason, I was no longer scared. I was more annoyed by the fact that some idiot would think this an appropriate time to be banging on someone's door. I headed over and unlocked the deadbolt. I pulled the front door open, leaving the chain in place. In the heat of the moment, I didn't even think to look out the window first. I just yanked the door right open. Standing on my front porch was a woman, around her mid-twenties. She had long black hair, a purple hoodie, and black pants on. Can I help you with something? She responded. Yeah, sorry to bother you so late, but my boyfriend and I are having some car trouble. Our phones are dead, so we were wondering if you could let us in to use yours. She pointed at the street to a dark-colored sedan parked right underneath the street lamp. See, that's our car right there. Now, had this been any other person, I would have said no, but the girl looked like a young college student. I live in a college town, and it's not uncommon for college kids to be out late on a weekend night. I asked her where her boyfriend was. She said he had walked to the gas station to see if anyone had a phone there. I pulled my iPhone out and told her to make a quick call as I was about to head into bed. She thanked me and said she'd only take two seconds. She took my phone and dialed the number, then put the phone up to her ear. After a couple of rings, whoever she called picked up. Yeah, it's me. I'm borrowing someone's phone. She stopped talking and I could barely make out a man's voice on the other end. For some reason, I started to feel uneasy. She was taking a lot longer to be done with the phone call than I'd anticipated and I was starting to get somewhat impatient. The whole time, she just kind of stood there staring at me with this wide-eyed expression. A creepy smile crept over her face as the person on the other end kept talking. Finally, she said okay bye and handed me my phone back. Hey, do you think I might be able to come inside to use the bathroom for a second? I said no and wished her good luck before slamming the front door. Just as I was about to walk away, I heard her begin maniacally laughing. She said, you made the right choice. I looked out the peephole. She was still standing on my porch, but now a man had appeared from nowhere and was standing right next to her. He was wearing a hoodie and a face mask. The pair then started to circle around my home, banging on the windows and laughing raucously. I didn't hesitate to call 911 at this point. They stuck around for several minutes, even trying to get in through my back door. I grabbed my Glock 19 and aimed at the door with 911 on speaker. I was prepared to do whatever I had to if they broke in. They banged on my back door for around five minutes before they finally left. I watched them run up the street to that same black sedan I mentioned earlier and take off like a bat out of hell. The cops showed up a few minutes later and took a report. They told me I was the third person to call them that night, reporting this suspicious couple attempting to enter people's homes. I don't know what exactly they had planned, but I'm inclined to believe it was nothing so nice. Moral of the story is never answer the front door at night, especially without looking to see who it is first. I really learned my lesson that night. When I was a 16 to 17 year old girl, I would babysit for a set of twin eight-year-olds that lived across the street from me. It was the ideal summer job. I ferried them to and from various activities 
and in between we spent nearly every second outside. Every day was a new adventure. Adding to the fun, the twins family owned a medium-sized sweet as pie poodle mix who loved people more than anything. This dog was incredibly smart, gentle, and loving. She wouldn't have hurt a fly. We could always count on her to go on adventures with us. She would follow us at a far pace, exploring on her own but always keeping us within earshot. Whenever we met new people, she would gleefully bound toward them, eager to lick them and get pets, and express just how happy she was to see them. She really was the best. I remember one late summer morning, we decided to spend a few hours drawing on the front driveway in some chalk. The kids drew and rolled up and down the street on their scooters, while I laid on the driveway with the dogs soaking up the heat. Not many adults were around. It was a weekday and most were away at work. We couldn't have felt safer in the midday sun, in the safety of our quiet suburb. Occasionally, a neighbor would walk down the street and the dog would sidle up to them in greeting while I spent a few minutes making small talk. This continued on for a while. I was really getting relaxed by the heat and the sounds of the kids laughing and playing. The dog was resting right beside me, about to doze off, when suddenly a low growl began emanating from her throat. It was a threatening noise I'd never heard her make before, and it took me by surprise. I sat up looking around immediately, and I noticed that coming down the sidewalk toward the kids was a man I'd never seen in the neighborhood before. He was older and a bit haggard looking, and was watching us like a hawk. The dog was having none of it though. She slowly got louder and more intense as the man meandered towards us. That should have been a sign to me, but I didn't know anything. I was 17 and too young to understand to trust my gut. All I was taught was how to be polite. The man stopped and started trying to initiate conversation with me. It was like many other people who had walked by and done the same thing throughout the morning but he was asking some strange questions. Were we going to be alone all day? What was I doing with these kids? Where were all our parents? It was unnerving, but he was an adult. I tried to be as vague as possible. He kept trying to creep closer to me. The children were mercifully racing away on their scooters for most of this experience. His gaze turned into something more like a leer. Any time he moved closer to me, the dog would growl louder and start barking viciously. I had never seen her act like this. It actually got to the point where I was holding her back as she tried to snap at the man, all while apologizing for her behavior. The man seemed to falter as he realized just how much she hated him. Even though she was not a big dog, she was clearly not liking this guy at all. Eventually, he stopped attempting to come closer to me. He backed off and muttered a goodbye, then ran away down the street. I never saw the man again in the neighborhood after, and the many years that I babysat for that family, making it clear he was not from the area. I never saw their dog behave that way again either. I've always thought she sent some threat from the man I wasn't able to pick up on that day. Thankfully, she protected me from him trying something awful when I wouldn't have realized what he was doing at the time. So a few Saturdays ago now, I got a text from my little sister that went something like this. Hey bro, I'm gonna drive up to granddad's for a few hours to check in on him. He's been pretty lonely because of the whole lockdown thing. I think we should pay him a visit. I know what you're thinking and don't worry. He has that porch built so we can sit in his front garden while he sits inside. And we can just have a little chat. I'll bring some coffee and some cake for lunch. Are you up for joining me? I was snowed under with work and it had bled into my weekend. So despite the fact I should have just stayed home... I knew I needed to get out of my apartment for a while. I agreed to join up with her. It was unusually nice weather out, even for a British summer. I thought, why not? Besides, 
I hadn't seen my granddad in two or three months at this point. I really missed him. As long as we kept from getting too close to him physically, I didn't see the harm in trying to pay him a visit. My sister arrived in her beat-up old Volkswagen Golf at around noon. We started the drive out to our granddad's. We were having our own little catch-up talks ranging from stuff around the virus to various YouTube channels we'd been binging. All was going pretty well. I was using my phone map app to help her navigate, so I had my eyes glued to the phone screen. Obviously, she was watching the road. She's a very chatty person, so I did think it was a bit unusual when she suddenly stopped talking altogether. This went on for a few minutes, but I didn't think it was anything to worry about too much. I figured she was just concentrating on the road. I only realized something was actually wrong when she said something like, What's wrong with that car? I looked up to ask which one she was talking about, but even as I caught a brief glance, it was very obvious what she was talking about. We were stopped at some traffic lights, and at the head of one of the lines of cars, I see this gray car with its entire back window blocked by all kinds of stuff. That's dangerous enough on its own, but it also sat there doing that peep and creep thing you can make a car do from gently pressing on the clutch. At first, I just thought it was kind of funny. It seemed like they were trying to make their boring old dad car bounce up and down like some sort of Compton lowrider. I made a comment to my sister about why this is why dad should put away their Dr. Dre 2001 records after they turn 40 or something. The light turns green and we start moving again. The gray Voxo at the head of the line just sat there though, not moving at all. This gave me a chance to get a look into the driver's front seat. I caught a glimpse of the driver. I don't know what I was expecting, really. Maybe some white guy with wraparound shades lip-syncing expletives or something like that. Something relatively humorous, but instead, what I saw was anything but amusing. This dude had shades on all right, but he was slumped over in the driver's seat, with his head slopping off to one side. It was obvious he was very drunk. Not just, I've had a few too many in the pub drunk. I mean, this fellow was absolutely bladed. So drunk he looked barely even conscious. We heard a few beeping horns. The people behind him were evidently very annoyed. He just sat there not paying attention to the lights at all. I honestly thought that since we'd gotten past him, that would be the end of it. But nope. We heard a massively aggressive revving engine noise as the man zoomed past us at like a hundred miles an hour. He switched lanes so he was right in front of us, then he slammed his brakes immediately. I had to tell my sister to slow down so we could maintain a safe distance between us. He began swerving from side to side ahead of us as we passed on to a smaller road. It was so bad that cars coming from the other way were swerving and beeping their horns at him for fear of him slamming into them. It's not the scariest thing like a bloody vampire or a skinwalker or whatever, but I cannot overstate how scary it was to see such an oblivious and dangerous driver on the road right in front of you. He was acting completely unpredictable. He was swerving back and forth into oncoming traffic, slamming his brakes at any moment. I was worried that at some point it might be too late for us to stop ourselves before running into him. We made sure to keep quite a distance, as the road opened up in front of us again into a full-on dual carriageway. He switched lanes yet again. He was so close to causing a bloody accident. Once again, he made it so he was on our right-hand side. We came up to another set of traffic lights. Don't look at him. Just be cool. Don't look into his car. I told my sister. She was doubly nervous as me. She was the one actually driving, and it was her car we were driving in. Here's the thing. My sister is a blonde, and she's quite pretty. She gets a lot of attention from guys sometimes, something that's always been stressful for her and for me. When I heard a banging sound, I looked over to see the dirty, drunk driver banging on his window. I knew what was about to happen. I instinctively turned up our car's radio and reiterated for her to just ignore that car. 
There was a new concern now, though. Was he going to follow us? Follow us he did. As the lights turned green, the drunk driver kept level with us as we all started moving forward. He winded down his passenger window and started shouting over all the engines and traffic at us. Thank God for the car radio. We could only faintly hear the vulgar things he was saying. My sister was keeping her eyes on the road. I was staring the guy out at this point. I was scared, but I was also getting really angry. He was screaming at her, making disgusting gestures with his fingers and tongue. I was ashamed that another grown man could ever act like that. He was not paying attention to the road or his own driving either. I watched in absolute horror as he started drifting into us. Slowly but surely, his door was getting closer and closer to my sister's side of the car. He noticed me staring and switched his attention towards me. He became extremely aggressive. I could hear him clearly over the car radio even now, screaming through his window, stuff like, what are you looking at? Along with other things like that. I don't think it would be appropriate to write it all out for polite company. I warned my sister to edge off to the side of the road, which she did. We were moving off the dual carriageway into a small offshoot road. She ended up slowing down and stopping behind the van of a dude who was working on an electrical box. The drunk driver followed us through and actually had to swerve hard to avoid smashing into the parked van. That caused even more beeping from the cars behind. He was pretty much forced to carry on off down the road though. I was thanking God out loud that the dude wouldn't be able to follow us anymore. I turned to my sister to see if she was okay. She burst into tears, leaning her head onto the steering wheel and sobbing. I can't even blame her, though. She already finds driving stressful at the best of times, let alone with some drunk driver pervert trying to follow her. She was crying so loud, she drew the attention of that electrician fella. He came over to see what was wrong. The drunk driver had nearly just smashed into his car, so he was in a bit of a mood. I gave my sister pats on the back as I wound down my window and explained what was going on to the guy. This person had almost caused a serious accident through being drunk. When the electrician asked if I made a note of the guy's number plate, I was really kicking myself. I must have been so intensely scared of what might happen that it didn't even occur to me to record the guy's license plate number. I was at least consoled by the idea that surely someone else had the presence of mind to do what I'd neglected to do. I sincerely hoped that someone did. That fella shouldn't have been on the roads at all. I really, really hope he didn't cause an accident further on down the road. We ended up being late to our granddads, but he didn't mind at all once we explained the situation. He was outraged just as much as we were. How could such a thing occur in the first place? Yeah, that's my story. I know it's not as scary as stalkers or monsters or anything like that, but I can't remember a time when something has had me literally shaking with adrenaline like that did. We all tend to feel safe along the roads, to the point where some people find driving to be a boring experience, but it only takes one driver to remind us how vulnerable we all really are. Back in 2014, I moved to a beautiful town in the northeastern United States. It was just quiet enough for me, and I couldn't wait to start my new life there. I just started seeing someone a few weeks prior to this happening, but we weren't living together at the time of this story. I was alone most nights, which I didn't mind at the time. When I started seeing this new girlfriend, she made it clear to me that we couldn't sit in old, stone-cold Steve Austin furniture anymore, and I needed to find some real furniture. I hate to say it, but she was right. I found a lot of stuff at the thrift store, but garage sales were where I was really furnishing my entire house from. Lamps, tables, couches, you name it. I was buying one. Saturday afternoon, when I was looking for some kitchen stuff, I met this one guy who was selling some really cool things. It wasn't your typical garage sale junk he had. 
He had these weird statues and relics from different religions, it looked like. He told me that he and his son used to collect artifacts from all over the world. They were fascinated by different cultures and ideas. I was truly interested in these stories. He went on to tell me that his son had taken a job in Japan, and he wouldn't be coming back anytime soon. His son had said it was okay to sell all the stuff, since it was probably worthless either way. The stuff was awesome though, and I was totally willing to buy some of this junk for cheap. I'm a collector of weird oddities myself. So, to be able to get more weird stuff to throw on my bookshelf was an opportunity I could not pass up. I grabbed some rocks from some ancient city I forgot the name of, and some ancient Babylonian statues. The guy assured me they were all replicas, but my guests don't need to know that when they come over. He was laying out some more relics when some random old woman came over and flipped the table over. She started to claim that the symbols on one of the rocks were cursed and against her religion. I told her to relax. These weren't even real. She was not having it, though. She was probably 75 years old. She started going crazy and began crying as well. I gestured to the guy to put the stuff away, and I would come back later to take a look. That's exactly what I did, but in the meantime, I walked the woman to her car and made sure she was alright. I even apologized for buying the allegedly cursed items. I lied to her and just told her I returned them. I ended up spending almost $70, but I bought almost all the weird relics and occult items this guy had. When I got home, I decorated my house with them. I was pleased and quite happy with my day of garage sale hunting. I was talking to my girlfriend that night on the phone. She was quite happy for me, but also gave me a piece of her mind about buying random junk I didn't need. It was sort of a problem with me. Again, she was right, and we ended up talking on the phone for a long time that night. Before I knew it, it was already after midnight. I was ready to head to bed. We were still on the phone as I was climbing in, when I heard the sound of a door shutting inside my home. Without hanging up, I told her I was going to go check it out, even though she told me not to and to be careful. I was sure it was probably just the wind or air pressure slamming the basement door or something. That hadn't really happened before, but I guessed it could have been the first time. I remember while I was walking down the upstairs hallway, my girlfriend was really convinced these items were actually cursed. I remember specifically laughing out loud at that. When I got to the bottom of the stairs, though, I heard a voice coming from around the corner. While on the phone with my girlfriend, I texted her and said to call 911. I heard the voice coming from my living room. It was soft and gentle, clearly an older woman's voice. She just kept muttering no over and over. I instantly remembered the old woman from the garage sale earlier that day. There's no way, I thought to myself. Eventually, I worked up the courage to peek around the corner, and I couldn't believe my eyes. The woman was kneeling down in front of my bookcase, rocking back and forth while whispering no over and over. I didn't engage with her. I figured I should let the police deal with this situation. I just hoped they would show up soon enough. Thankfully, the police showed up in about two minutes. They came up and in a very calm and professional way, they apprehended the woman. She immediately became erratic, claiming my house was cursed and she had to exorcise us. I thanked her, but trust me when I tell you I had those cops take her out of my house right away. I found out after the fact that the woman was obviously not mentally all there. She was diagnosed with some laundry list worth of things. The fact that she was still out there is what's truly horrifying. It's also a bit sad. She didn't have any family or friends to rein her in. Apparently, this poor woman was alone in the world. I don't know what happened to her after this. It wouldn't surprise me one bit if she's still alive and kicking. I'm thankful my girlfriend called the police, because I don't know what would have happened if she didn't. It's not the most important detail, but I think it's worth noting that my girlfriend in this story is now my wife. Still to this day, I have all the weird statues and stuff all over my house, so if they really are cursed, 
I'm waiting for that bad luck to come any time. My dad always leaves the house around the same time. It's always before the sunrise. Not even 20 minutes, my dad was out walking one day when he saw a candle burning. Once he started to get closer, he thought it would be a fire hazard, so he was going to put out this candle in the middle of the woods. Then he realized, though, that this was not just a candle. It was a crime scene. There were various dead animals surrounding the candle. All of them looked like they had been sacrificed. It was hard to tell because of how disfigured they were, but my dad suspected the animals were a dog, two chickens, and a pigeon. He immediately called the police. Something else he noted that was quite strange was that there seemed to be no blood anywhere around this place. No blood at all. These animals had been killed somewhere else. My dad was very disturbed. Who sacrifices animals and leaves them in the woods with a regular yoga candle? It even said Namast on the side. This was especially disturbing because my dad remembered an incident months ago in the same area. He was walking and taking some pictures. He's a photographer, by the way. All of a sudden, out of the woods, a girl in her late teens to twenties at the oldest emerged from the tree line and told him he had to follow her because she had something real cool to show him. He'd encountered her once before. He started following her. They were going very far from the pathway. She started acting a bit too excited, and he realized the situation was a bit too weird for him. He turned to leave, but not before she somewhat ominously said she'd see him again one day. The police didn't come right away. They were very lackadaisical about it all. It seemed it wasn't the first time they'd found animals ritually sacrificed in the woods. That time, however, wasn't a dog. It was a goat. My dad took a different walk for a while. He was quite concerned, but there was nothing he could really do. This incident just happened, and I'm pretty scared about it. My husband and I live in a ranch house with a basement, and my parents also live there. We're pretty unnerved about the whole sacrifice thing and about that weird girl who seemed to want to lead my dad somewhere into the woods. Once in middle school, I went on a camping trip in a state park. I was sharing a tent with three people, and one of them was asleep. The other two and I stayed up until midnight, talking about anything we wanted, really. It was all pretty good, until we suddenly heard a scream in the distance, possibly from the next campsite over. We all stopped talking, and heard leaves begin rustling around us. We could make out the silhouettes of people walking to our campsite. A couple of them were dragging huge bags around the area. The people stopped walking around. I had to go pee really badly, so I snuck out to the outhouse at the parking area, about a quarter mile away from our tents. As I was in that parking area alone, I heard rustling in the bushes nearby. I looked over and saw what appeared to be someone's ear. After going back to the tent, after going back to the tent, my friends explained to me that the figures had come up to it and stood in front for a while, but left before I came back. After that, we all gradually fell to sleep but I was left thinking about those strange people walking around the tent and that scream. I called the police, but as far as I know, they didn't find out anything further about it. About 10 years ago, I was in high school at the time. I was playing on the computer after dinner. I ran upstairs to get a glass of water when all of a sudden, I heard gunshots ring out and glass shattering everywhere around me. I dropped to the ground as shards of glass flew everywhere. My mom and sister ran into the farthest room from the front of our house, while my dad grabbed two pistols and handed me one. 
we waited for the gunfire to cease and went outside to see who had just shot up our family home. Nobody was out there. It seemed they had already fled. I was shitting bricks thinking about what to do if we actually found them. It turned out it was my estranged, non-blood-related uncle who was getting divorced and wanted to take it out on his wife's family. It really scared the shit out of me. My SO and I were swimming at a state park in the ocean, about 150 feet offshore. There was a strong current pushing to my right. I looked over and saw a bunch of fins and huge bodies in the water. There was a swarm of sharks just underneath the surface, circling about 25 feet away. The current was very quickly sending us toward them. I told my SO to swim fast back to shore, but he was paralyzed with fear. He kept trying to grab my arms. I knew if I stayed, we would only both get pushed into the swarm, so I swam away as hard and fast as I could. We found out later that day that the beach had been closed. A whale carcass had floated into the area, bringing a lot of sharks and invoking a feeding frenzy. What is up guys, Blue Spooky here. Thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made it this far to the end of the video. If you liked the video, please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you feel so inclined. If you have any feedback for me as well, be sure to leave that in comments below the video. If you guys have a story you'd like to send in, or if you'd like to contact me for any reasons, there will be links to my social media in the description below the video, including my Facebook, Gmail, and Twitter accounts. Go ahead and send me a message on any of those, and I'll try to get to you as soon as possible. If you do decide to send in a story, please be sure to include in the tagline what the name of the story is if it has one, what type of story it is if it has one, and how you'd like to be credited in the description below the video. Please make sure to include as much detail as you feel comfortable with and try to use as much proper grammar as possible to make sure you have the highest chance of appearing in a future video. Overall, I think that's pretty much it for now guys, so thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys have a great day.